Tomas, thank you. We begin this half hour with the latest on a house fire that happened earlier this morning in Northeast Bakersfield. Let's go back out live to 23 ABC's Ava Kirshner, who is at the scene with the latest information. Ava? Yeah, Mike, sad scene here. One person is now confirmed dead due to this house fire that erupted in Northeast Bakersfield this morning. Neighbors telling me it was an elderly woman who lived alone. Now, this is the house right behind me. As you can see, fire officials still working on it, still tearing up parts of the roof and spraying down the scene. Fire officials told me that they found her in the back of the house and tried to treat her injuries. However, they were unsuccessful. At this time, the cause of the fire is not known. It started just before 4 a.m. and was put out just before 5 a.m. The roof was up in flames the majority of the time. However, the other houses next to it are OK. Now, several crews have left the scene. However, Bakersfield Fire, BPD, pg e still on scene. Law enforcement telling me that law enforcement and fire crews will conduct separate investigations into this house case. For now, live in Northeast Bakersfield, Ava Kirshner, 23 ABC News, connecting you. All right, Ava, thank you for that. Now to an update on the fire that broke out in northeast Bakersfield. It's being called the East Fire. It ignited near Brown Mountain Road in an area north of Hart Park. At last check, the fire was about 1,200 acres. It's now, we're told, fully contained. No reports of injury or damage to any structures. We talked to Kern County Fire Captain Andrew Freeborn, who told us about the makeup of the area that presented a real challenge for fire crews. So as, as we're fighting this fire, this area has uh, different oil production and other infrastructure that's all through this area. So as you look around, you can see oil derricks, you can see pipelines, you can see overhead lines of electrical lines. And so that is certainly something that we have to be mindful of as we're working on the ground, as well as the helicopters that are making the water drops. They have to be mindful of these things as well. So we're continuing to work around these. If we see any hazards, we make sure to identify those and communicate those to one another. And the fire broke out just after 2.30 in the afternoon. Also burning this morning, the Paramount Fire. It's near Highway 46 in the Lost Hills area. Last check, the fire was more than 100 acres. No reports of containment. Started late yesterday afternoon. Officials say the fire has a slow rate of spread and is burning between levees. There are no evacuation orders or warnings in place right now. No reports of any injury or property damage. We'll have more details as they become available. And a wildfire that's spreading in Nevada is now threatening thousands of the region's Joshua trees. The so-called York Fire already has charred around 80,000 acres of land. The fire broke out last Friday here in California and the flames crossed into Nevada on Sunday. The Joshua tree plants at risk grow only one to three inches a year. This is according to Laura Cunningham, the California director of the Western Watershed Project, an organization that works to protect and restore watersheds on this side of the country. It will take a lifetime to get those mature, big Joshua tree forests back. Some are fire resistant, and if the flames are not too hot, they will stump sprout or they will reseed. According to Cunningham, the fire is also threatening the Joshua trees of Nevada. The fire, meantime, continues to burn and resources from the National Park Service Bureau of Land Management and San Bernardino Fire Protection District are battling the fire. Clark County is on standby. Firefighters reportedly have the wildfire about 23 percent contained. The cause of the York fire is still unknown. And with all these recent fires happening, Kern County Fire wants to remind everyone the best defense Against that is to make sure your home is prepared. A couple things to keep in mind to increase your home's chances of survival. Uh, when it comes to new buildings, they choose fire resistant materials, which is good. They limit the amount and you can limit the amount of flammable vegetation that's planted around it. Also, make sure to stay on top of your landscaping, trim those branches, keep the trees pruned and make sure everything is watered so nothing gets too dried out. For more information and tips, go to KernFireSafe.org. Well, the Fox Theater in Taft is a piece of our local history spanning all the way back to the 1920s. But last year, it nearly closed its doors for good. That's right. 23 ABC's Veronica Morley has more on how the theater stayed in business and the changes they've made along the way. The Taft Fox Theater is under new management, and they're trying a few new different things, including a closed caption movie Tuesday. Let's all go to the lobby. 
to get ourselves a treat. The Box Theater in Taft is back open after briefly closing last year, thanks to the West Side Recreation and Park District, who took it over from the previous owner. We feel that movies are a part of recreation. Anything you do in your spare time is considered recreation. Stephanie Molina with the Park District said in order to revitalize the downtown landmark, the district has made some changes. One of the biggest changes has been the aesthetics in the lobby itself. Nothing really to the historic look. We really wanted to keep the Art Deco type look. Along with a fresh coat of paint, in the lobby. They've also updated their concession stand and now they're offering closed captioning with all their movies every Tuesday. We had heard from our community that that was an interest of theirs. Most movie theaters offer some version of closed captioning options, such as devices with captions or additional headsets for movies. But at the Fox, this is actual closed caption words on the screen. I am very excited to make a new fresh start. I think it's cool. I think it's like Bobby is because out there I have Bobby's. The theater also now offers movies dubbed in Spanish, and they're also beginning to open their stage for events like concerts. We have a blues guitarist coming. The district is hoping to encourage local businesses to advertise with the theater in order to support local economy as well as this historic building. When we knew that the theater was in trouble, our board and district administrator felt that it was important to try to step in and help. And the Taft Fox Theater is located here on Center Street in Taft. For more details, you can head to our website, turn to 23.com, and we have a link to their website. For 23 ABC News, I'm Veronica Morley, connecting you. All right, very nice. Still to come, it's a party to celebrate going back to school. Details on a big event this weekend to make sure your students get everything they need to start the year off right. And on the east end of Bakersfield, high schools are much closer than ever to the completion of a pool on one of their campuses. These stories and more when 23 ABC News returns. And taking a check of our top stories, former President Trump facing another historic indictment, this time for his role in efforts to try and overturn the 2020 presidential election. The Justice Department accusing him of conspiring to defraud the country and attempting to block the peaceful transfer of power. He's facing four felony counts and is expected to appear in court tomorrow. And the Mega Millions jackpot just keeps getting bigger. Nobody won last night's drawing. Now the prize is swelling to $1.25 billion. The lottery, now one of the largest in the country's history. The next drawing is Friday. Well, Highland High School celebrated the groundbreaking for a new aquatic center, and it's a project that has been in the works for four years now. It's expected to be the first pool on a high school campus in Northeast Bakersfield. The school's principal tells us right now most students have to travel to other parts of town to gain access to a pool in order to practice sports such as water polo. This new pool will allow students at Highland and other schools around the area a closer place to practice and compete. We're super excited because this is more than just for Highland. This is a community effort, and we're really excited that they have chosen to place the pool on campus to be able to serve our feeder schools, our elementary schools, and our other high schools that are our neighboring. Vigstrom tells us the construction of the pool is expected to be completed by next fall. We're talking 2024. Well, if you donate blood this week, your family could win some extra money to put toward back to school supplies. The Houchin Community Blood Bank is hosting a special event where anyone who donates between today and August 19th will be entered to possibly win a $250 back to school gift card to use at the store of their choice. A winner will be selected each week for a total of three winners of gift cards. To schedule an appointment, call 323-4222. It is the season for back to school preparation and many organizations are helping kids to get ready for day one. Joining us in Studio B this morning with details on a party in a parking lot is Danielle Colbert with Kern Medical. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Welcome you for back to me. Studio B. It looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Well, this is amazing too because uh, you were telling me that this, first of all, is the first party in the parking lot, mm -hmm. but it's not at the hospital. Correct. It's at yeah. our Columbus Clinic. So that's 1111 Columbus Street. 
Street. Okay. Um, and that's going to be this Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon. Now, in addition, you've done things in the past where you have worked with uh, the doing the physicals, doing yes. the immunizations, but this is much bigger. I mean, it's much bigger. We're offering all of those things. I know it's really hard to get in right now to get your kids back to school ready um, at their primary care physician sometimes. So we're offering all of those things, physicals, immunizations, catch-up vaccines, but we also wanted to make it a little bit more of a one-stop shop, especially there's a lot of boxes you got to check on the back to school oh, yeah. list. So we're also offering haircuts, um, free backpacks. I mean, we're all, we're gonna have a ton of things. Those are all the things you need, but we're also gonna have food, swag, live music, you name it. Now, what is the, is there a specific age group that we're going for? Is this for, for grade schoolers or all the way up to high schoolers, just the whole gamut? You know, if you need any of those items, then you're welcome to come on out as long as you're a student. Student has to be present to be able to receive those items. You're gonna go through the medical checklist first with the immunizations and everything, and then you can line up for that free haircut and get a free backpack as long as supplies last. Of course. Now you've always done partnerships uh, through the physicals, yes. getting the immunizations. Kind of what was the catalyst behind wanting to make this much bigger? I mean, there's been a lot of different events and stuff. Mm -hmm. Some we've lost due to the pandemic. Right. Other ones have popped up. What, what what was the catalyst behind this? I think it's a multitude of reasons. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, the pandemic being able to get back out there. I know our staff is really excited to get back out there and volunteer and be part of the community because that's what we love to do at Kern Medical. But also just being able to help the family. Families, um, that come to Kern Medical or you know showing them what we're all about being able to provide those haircuts and have a great time while doing it and get kids excited to get back in the classroom. Now is there anybody that's partnering up with you to help you put this on? We're gonna have a lot of people there so we have Kern Health Systems they're offering to help with us um, they're a great partner that we always have um, I believe Adventist Health is gonna have a booth out there um, we're gonna have I mean KCSO crime prevention I can't think of all of them because there's a lot that are coming but it's gonna be a big party in the parking lot. And it starts at? 8 a.m. all the way to noon. 8 a.m. until noon. Mm -hmm. Daniel Colbert, a.k.a. Kern Camp, joining us <laughs> from Kern Medical this morning. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Who doesn't love a party? All right. Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Nothing but uh, good news as far as our weather pattern is concerned. As we're seeing cooler conditions really begin today for all of the southwest region, which is a nice break after this incredible uh, long string of uh, temperatures well above average. Unbelievable. All right, 80 right now for Vegas, 86 in Palm Springs, closer to home. We're checking mid to low 70s, some 60s as you can see. Good morning, Lake Isabella. You're checking 70 and 51 cool, cold degrees up in Lockwood Valley. As far as your forecast and highs are concerned, again, those numbers are beginning to come down and you'll be quite happy with what uh, tomorrow is going to bring for us. 80s for areas such as Lebec and Fraser Park, and uh, we are seeing some triple digits for our desert communities as to be expected. As far as your seasonal average, I shared this with you earlier, 98 is what we should be seeing. So things are starting to balance out just a bit. Uh, fast forward to this to Saturday, just to keep a close eye as far as uh, moisture is concerned. So as far as this weekend, we might see a little uptick as far as dew points are concerned, uh, but that threat of rain will still linger, believe it or not. You can see this right here. Uh, we're talking east end of the valley. We're bordering uh, Nevada right here. And monsoon moisture just continues to really just blanket the southwest region. So with that said, we're talking five potentially 3% chance of rain for mountain areas and our desert communities. I don't think it's going to happen, but could see a pop-up shower or two, potentially some drizzle or uh, some cumulative nimbus clouds that could potentially bring us some thunder uh, as well as lightning. 16 mile per hour gusts, strongest we're seeing, and air quality is moderate, which is great news considering we just pulled out of this massive area of high pressure. Uh, numbers will start to warm up, as you can see, Saturday, 104 next Monday. So uh, we will be a uh, Trading, trading this off a little bit for cooler conditions this week for much warmer conditions next, but we'll take it in stride. Mountain areas only one day of triple digit highs. That's for Lake Isabella. Otherwise, things are looking absolutely perfect. All right, let's check in with Mr. Tomas Martinez and see how the commute is this Wednesday morning. Good morning. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, everybody. Well, it looks like our officers are responding to a two vehicle crash over on northbound Highway 99, just south of 7th Standard Road. Uh, no worries, though. These vehicles are off to the right shoulder and not affecting lanes. And for anybody that's planning on headed out of the air this morning, all major roadways are open. So buckle up those seatbelts, drive safe. Have a great west rest of your Wednesday morning. That's my final look at traffic. I'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Tomas, thank you. Straight ahead, one final check of your top stories, and we'll get you out the door on this Wednesday. 
Welcome back. Recapping this morning's top stories, we have new information on a deadly house fire that happened earlier this morning in Northeast Bakersfield. 23 ABC's Ava Kirshner joining us live again from the scene with new details. Ava. Yeah, Mike, not much in terms of new information here. Still one person just confirmed dead. Neighbors telling me it was an elderly woman who lived alone. Fire officials found her towards the back of the house, tried to treat her injuries. However, they were unsuccessful. This is the house here right behind me. The cause of this fire still under investigation. Fire crews still on scene. They were overhauling the roof as well as spraying down the scene and investigating. The fire was put out just before 5 a.m. It was going for about an hour. Other houses around the area are okay. Now, crews are currently leaving the scene. Bakersfield fire is still on scene as well as PG&E still blocking the roads here at Dartmouth and West Point Drive in Northeast Bakersfield. Law enforcement telling me they'll be conducting a separate investigation from fire to get to the bottom of this. Live in Northeast Bakersfield, Ava Kirshner, I'll send it back to you. Thank you, Ava. Now to an update on the fire that broke out in northeast Bakersfield, known as the East Fire. It ignited near Round Mountain Road north of Hart Park. At last check, the fire was at over 1,200 acres, but it's now fully contained. There were no reports of any injuries or damage to any structures, and we spoke with Kern County Fire Captain Andrew Freeborn, who told us about how the makeup of the area presented a real challenge for firefighters. So as, as we're fighting this fire, this area has uh, different oil production and other infrastructure that's all through this area. So as you look around, you can see oil derricks, you can see pipelines, you can see overhead lines of electrical lines. And so that is certainly something that we have to be mindful of as we're working on the ground, as well as the helicopters that are making the water drops. They have to be mindful of these things as well. So we're continuing to work around these. If we see any hazards, we make sure to identify those and communicate those to one another. The fire began Tuesday just after 2.30 p.m. Meantime, firefighters have stopped forward progress on the Paramount Fire near Highway 46 in the Lost Hills area. The fire burned 107 acres starting Tuesday afternoon. According to officials, no reports of injuries or any property damage. Officials need your help to find a missing teenager. Take a look. This is 17-year-old Rosario Hurumi Gonzaga. She's described as 5'3", weighing about 110, with two nose piercings. The family says she went missing in East Bakersfield Wednesday afternoon at about 3.30. She was last seen wearing a black shirt, gray sweatpants, and sandals. If you have any information on her whereabouts, call KCSO at the number on your screen. Now to a traffic alert. A portion of 6th Street in Wasco is expected to be permanently closed beginning tomorrow. According to a California High Speed Rail Authority official, 6th Street between G and H streets will be shut down as part of a construction package for the high speed rail. Officials say access will still be maintained for local businesses and property owners. For more info, you can visit the website buildhsr.com. One last look at this sensational seven day. 91 degrees tomorrow, unbelievable. Today, 95 clear conditions. Gusty winds will join us throughout the afternoon hours. Um, but look at this, it's just unbelievable. Now, next Monday, things are gonna change up as you can see, really heat's beginning to spike as we move through Saturday, Sunday into Monday. But all in all, it's a fair trade off for cool conditions this week for warmer ones. Yeah, and of course, the cool conditions always helping fire crews out there. So that's good, yeah, good, good news there. Yeah. It's gonna do it for us this morning on a Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in. Leave you with this shot. You can see that haze out there from our rooftop HD camera. Live pictures this morning. We'll be back in 30 minutes with a live local update for the latest breaking news, weather, and traffic. Anytime you need it, anywhere, download our free mobile and tablet apps. Have a great Wednesday.